So he was only 14 when he made it. Jennifer Varga says her 15-year-old son Dayton was funny, popular and passionate about football. She became concerned when he started spending time alone in his dark room, always on his phone. But still, she never imagined he'd die by suicide. Totally blindsided. We did. He showed no signs of depression, no, you know, anything. Just one day, I came home and he was gone. That was three years ago. She says her family needed support to deal with Dayton's suicide, especially her husband, Curtis. He went from a very proud, um, confident, um, hardworking man to a broken person. Varga says she struggled to find him help, other than medication which her husband didn't like to take. Curtis died by suicide in 2022, two years after his son's death. We went from a four-person family to two. The Saskatchewan Division of the Canadian Mental Health Association says without post-pension support, one suicide can often lead to more. One of the things that triggers people to, to suicide is like is grief and loss, loss of any, any sort, including a family member or, or close friend. So um, in a way, postvention is prevention. Saskatoon Crisis Intervention Services offers that support. The Director of Clinical Services says research shows that for every person who dies by suicide, 135 persons are affected. Those that are left behind after a person dies of suicide, that is extremely impactful to their health and wellness. So we will continue to offer that psychosocial support to them as well. Varga approves of the province's plan to fund a postvention support program. She's part of a private support group and she finds comfort in her garden where she preserves memories of her late son and husband. Pratish Dayal, CBC News, Saskatoon.